everyone to American Pizza Presents Free Friday Webinars. I'm Shelly Sanchez Terrell, and this is Roscoe the Plug. And today we're going to talk about Halloween. Now, when we actually get closer to Halloween, Roscoe and I do tend to dress up a bit, so um, you'll get to see that. <laughs> Um, we're here every Friday, thanks to American TESOL. We have done over 100 topics. You can get a certificate of attendance um, by going to ShellyTarrell.com um, slash webinars, or I'll give you one a uh, bit.ly ELT link. It's from American TESOL, but also on top of that, um, you get uh, the resources. We give you all the bookmarks. And we have the slides that you can download as well, and a free recording to share uh, with your colleagues. So we're here. Every Friday, you can invite people. <laughs> we try to make it interesting so it's not boring. Um, we have usually a worldwide audience, and these get um, posted on YouTube as well. So let me go ahead and post um, the link so you can get the different resources there. And I will post where you can get the certificate to download as well. So next week, we're going to talk about Halloween for teens and adults, but today we're going to talk about young learners, and I will be talking from things that I've done with really young learners. I've taught two-year-olds all the way to 80 years old in many different countries, um, English, and so I'm going to share with you some of the activities that I do with my students in, um, in, in Texas, where I currently am, but also in Germany. So lots of fun, great ways to um, and why Halloween? Well, you know, Halloween, one of the great things about it, and I love this quote by Gretchen Owaki, is that it's a time when students really get to dress up and make believe. Uh, but there's so many great themes and topics that come on Halloween, like zombies and monsters and vampires. And if you look at the cartoons or you look at video games, all of those things come out. And students really like them, and witches, and wizards, and spells. So it's a great time to learn a lot of different topics. If you teach CLIL, Content in Language Integrated um, Learning, um, which is basically when you teach when you teach English, but you teach it within a subject. So you might teach, for example, geometry or science, and English is just a part of that. Then it's a great time, Halloween's a great time to do some really cool science stuff as well. So we're going to take a look at some of the different ways you can explore hands-on and allow your students to be quite creative with that. Um, first of all, when you have Halloween, it's a good time to, have, to really engage your students to get them excited about reading because that is the time when you can have zombies and monsters and hauntings and you can do things with sci-fi. Sci-fi is one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite genres and it's during this time that you can have your students look at things about space and aliens because it's all about dress up. So if it's about dress up then you can really get your students into these kind of things become a little bit more acceptable during the Halloween time. I find that parents are kind of okay with this. Sometimes we do myths and legends. So uh, we're, one of my institutes here, we have a high Mexican American po or high Mexican population, so we get a lot of Spanish speakers. I've also worked in classrooms where I've had 13 different nationalities and languages. Um, so one of the things was there's a lot of myths in a lot of different countries. So you can teach that about culture. And so here we would teach about the La Llorona. We would tell the story about this woman. Um, and this is kind of, this is um, Mexican or, or Spanish type of folklore. So this was something we would talk about during um, this time. You can talk about ghosts. You can tell ghost stories. Um, you can talk and share about fantasy. So there's a lot of different types of really famous um, authors who write fantasy. Magic and wizards. Students love Harry Potter. They love things like vampires, things like uh, Twilight. Uh, you have things about the zombie apocalypse. So these are all great topics for uh, sharing and, and, and choosing these. You can choose them in comic book form. Uh, that works really well for language learners. 
So here are some of the ones that I've collected. And I've actually have, if you look at the pearl trees for the Halloween site, you're going to see another one. Now, a pearl tree, what it means is these are bookmarks. You don't have to sign up or anything like that. But you just click on the box and it blows it up. So you'll have this forever. I collect a bunch of them. If you do sign up, you can even take my bookmarks and add to them. So that's really cool. And so these are the, some of the ones I've read for really young learners. I really love Julia Donaldson. She comes out with a lot of music. And a really good friend of mine, John C. Spencer, came out with this book, Window the Worst Wizard. Um, and that's a really good one. I love this one. Dan Dave Pickerel is really good. And he, this is really good for younger learners as well. So if you get the really little ones that are about five or six or seven, um, they love Dave Pilker. Uh, he has this one about um, Halloweeners, so it's so cute. It has a little wiener dog, and he's dressed in all these costumes throughout. A little bit older, you have 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds. Um, there's a series called Goosebumps, and I, the boys really loved Goosebumps. They make it for the for the age groups so that way from nine years old to about 12 years old and it's a little scary but not scary uh really scary for kids they do make it scholastic has it it's something that you can teach with they have a lot of great materials with it the other one is miss nelson miss nelson is uh, one of the books that i grew up reading and this is a great book about a teacher and she her kids are so bad her students are horrible so what she does is she goes missing and she gets a substitute. And the substitute happens to be a witch. So it's, it's very interesting. And then when she comes back, her students love her so much. And they begin to treat her with a lot more respect. One of the best sites, I think, for young learners, and you'll find activities, um, in, and you'll find um, as young as uh, four years old, all the way up to is uh, Learn English Kids. And I know a lot of people know about Learn English Kids, but one of the reasons I share it is because it continues to be one of the best resources for my students. Um, the great thing is they'll give you the story. If you sign up and it's free, and your students can sign up because it's sort of, they've made it into social network now. When you sign up, each story comes, you can play the stories without signing up. I do that a lot. And it comes with the, um, the words. It also has all these features that are made for language learners, so it's really good. The stories are made for, um, are, are, are read um, by different um, British voices, so it's more British English. Um, that is something to note. But with each one, if you sign up and when that's free, then you get free printables. So they actually give you um, worksheets that you can print out. Uh, for each one, they give you where you can actually print out the different storylines. So they, and the activities are very good. And you also learn what other teachers do with the story. Then they have tons of stories. They have on, on different things like um, casting magic spells. They have one on um, this one is in the dark, dark wood. They have one on another haunted house. But the other great thing is they also come with different games. And the games are meant to learn vocabulary, meant to learn language. They practice your listening skills. And the students find them very, very um, interesting as well. One of my favorite ones is where students get to create a monster and it, they learn the parts of the body because they have to choose the eyes and the ears and the nose. And when they choose them, and this is my student's favorite one, so they choose the monster and after that um, the monster, you can choose for him to sing and he goes, oh, I'm a monster, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he turns around and he blows up. So the kids really love this. This has always been their favorite. Um, you also get songs. And the songs are pretty good, too, like the scary skeleton. And they also have the lyrics where you can print them out and do activities as well. Hi, Becky. Hi, Sonny. Um, hi, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> um, it's OK if you're a little late. I'm going to put the, the links that we're talking about. So we just went through one of the sites with the Learn English Kids, and we talked about reading materials, that this is a good time to choose um, different types of reading materials. So after they've learned about, um, or they've heard a story, and they heard a, let's say they heard a ghost story, or let's say they just um, heard a vampire or zombie story or a monster story. Well, now you can give them the mission or the task to create their own story. Now, you can do this in different ways. Um, digital stories, there's so many ways that we teach. Um, and with 
with um, different topics, you can teach the parts of the body, you can teach a grammar structure, you can give them a list of vocabulary words, and that, that's what they do sometimes. Sometimes I give them a list of vocabulary words, and I say choose five out of the ten, and these must be in your story, okay? So you can give them checklists and criteria, so that way they can make the digital story, and you can focus on um, the vocabulary, you can focus on the grammar structure, and you can say, we're making this in the present tense, or you can make them have one about, like, for example, their favorite costume. What was the favorite costume they've seen someone wear? Or maybe that they wore at one time. So they can create a lot of different, or they can create something like a ghost story. You can have them do research they on ghosts around the town, and then they can make their own ghost story from that out of their research. There's a lot of great tools for this. You can have them work in pairs to do this. If you do, I always start my storytelling, and let's say this is going to be in a book form or it could be a video form, with a type of graphic organizer. I love graphic organizers. I really think it gets students to really think about oh, the plot, um, the characters. But for language learners especially, it's so great because it, what it does is it prepares the brain. Our brain it can be like a sponge, but it doesn't work with just by reading something. But if you put it in a graphic organizer, our brain has nodes. So what it does is it um, it leaves it open. It's sort of a framework. So the cube, the great thing is this is all online. You can use this for free online. It's um, in its Read Write Web. Read Write Web it has amazing, amazing things for teachers. But let's say that you work in a place that maybe doesn't necessarily have a lot of internet connection, or maybe the internet connection isn't so reliable. One of the great things is below all of these, they have this part underneath. So you can write this mystery cube that goes great with Halloween. They can write a mystery story. What they do is you can print this out. You click this, it becomes a PDF that looks like this. So you can print that out, and in case the computer crashes or the internet, then you have this wonderful planning sheet that's printed out, and you can easily have the students go from there and create their stories. You'll have to excuse my son. My son is snoring in the background here. Sorry. <laughs> my little Roscoe. There are really great free tools to do this with. One of them is storybird.com. And you can have the students look at their, um, at the different types of ghost stories there. They have many, many. The great thing is the easiest way to make a story online. By the way, all these tools can be found here. Um, and they're free. They're absolutely free. I believe in sharing free tools for teachers. So the students, what they do is they pick these wonderful characters and um, backgrounds and stuff that were already designed by incredible artists. So you can see some of the artwork here, and it's really phenomenal. So they get to choose that, and then they create the words for it. You can embed it in a wiki. You can embed it in a website. One of the great things is, well, I've had my students do this. And you can sign up for a teacher account as well. Uh, what you can do is you're, you can share with the parents, and the parents love this. Um, they really get to see their, their child's creativity, but they get to see them use English in a really rewarding way. Toondo.com is another really great one. They can make it either in a comic or they have a bookmaker as well, so they can make their own book as well. Another really great one is LittleBirdTales.com. This is actually my favorite. One of the reasons why is because students can actually draw on it. They can they use their mouse and they can draw what they want. Um, but for language learners, it's wonderful because they also record their voice and they type. So when I look for web tools to use, I want the ones that are where they can practice everything. They practice their listening skills. They practice their um, their they. Their, their um, speaking skills, they practice their writing skills, and it's all visual, so it chunks the language and it really supports that. It gives a context. Um, it makes them really imagine the vocabulary, so I think that's really important. GoAnimate.com is a video, so it's a video tool that they can use. 
Um, the great thing is they have text-to-speech, so your students don't have to even add their voice. They can. And the awesome thing is they have different types of accents. So you can have a British American accent. You can have um, an accent from someone from India. You can have an accent from someone um, in America. And they have different boy accents, girl accents. So it helps your students to really listen to the different pronunciation as well. So I like this as well. And this is more of a movie. So if you're going to have them um, share a story, they can do it that way. Zoobers.com is a 3D pop-up book. They get they can embed it as well. All of these are free, by the way. Um, and the easiest way to do it, if you're doing it on a mobile device, let's say you happen to be very fortunate and you have iPads, um, or if you have Android tablets, then you can get Book Creator Lite. It's absolutely free. You can, um, they also have a paid version, but the free version is awesome too. They have really great things for students that have learning needs, like autism or dyslexia. Um, the people who created this app did a really fantastic job of really supporting students. If you do decide to do, um, you can even sell the books. Actually, your students can sell these books too. You can, it's a great way to raise funds for the school if you need more computers, if you want a cart of mobile devices. You can sell it on the um, Google Play Store, or you can sell it on the, um, on the iTunes Store as well. Puppet Pals is really awesome because they can make their own drawings, they can create their ghosts and everything like that, or they can choose from characters within Puppet Pals, and they can make them go on an adventure and talk, so that's also uh, a free app as well. They can learn about uh, different types of spooky creatures, so let's say you read them a book, they did Halloweener. Oh my gosh, what is this? People keep calling me. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but they can use different tools to really animate spooky character. So once they learn about a character, let's say one of the things you want them to do is you want to put them in a different types of settings. And what you do is you you um, want them to re and something that I like to do is say give a modern version of this or let uh, dress the character up in a different costume and what would he say or what would she say. So I have them choose different characters or they can draw their own. Sometimes after reading a monster story, then I'll say, okay, create your own monster. What does your monster look like? How many fingers? How many eyes? How many toes? You know, and they can learn about the parts of the body. And then they can animate them. What do you mean by animate? Well, what it means is after they draw them, they can put mouths on them and make them speak. They can make them come to life. One of the best tools for that is blabberize.com. So you can see it here. Some uh, student drew their monster. And then they drew a line. And that actually makes their monster talk. They give it the voice. Um, so it's really awesome. Yak it for kids. It's one of my absolute favorite, favorite tools. I'm going to see if I have the version here because um, I do have a version of it, and I often make Ross go do it. So I want to show you what it looks like in action, um, if I can find it here. I have zillions of apps, so sometimes it does take me a little while. Here we go. Um, so this is what it's called, Yakit, and they have a kid's version. They specifically, the people of Yakit, I just had um, this five-year-old Mariah do this. She made one with the lion. So you draw a mouse. You literally draw the mouse and then um, I have my volume off. That's why it's. So here you can see. <laughs> so that's Mariah. She made a little mouth on herself, and then she made it have this really high squeaky voice. So you can do that with monsters, or they can dress up in the favorite costumes. They can dress their pets up, like Roscoe's dressed up here, and then their pets can 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 say um, some funny stuff as well. So it they love it. They they really. I've seen teachers do amazing things. They make they animate these. They make paintings come to life. Um, there's this really funny one where it makes zombie. It's called Horror Fingers. It's a free app for iOS um, as well. Um, these are all free apps, by the way. <laughs> and they, they can make little costumes for them, little shirts and everything, and eyes. And this is their finger. 
and it's like a finger puppet because you know sometimes with especially with really young learners if you're working with four and five year olds I always do finger chant so we all go and we do a finger chant like where is Dumpkin? We well, could do a spooky Halloween version of Where is Dumpkin. Um, you can do, um, a, you know, a finger chant that goes with it, a Halloween one, and then they could have them with the horror fingers. They'll love putting mouse and animating them. I actually made one of the lessons. So when you go to the Pearl Trees, you're going to see a Google Doc there, and it's for a lesson plan that I made um, because I just got really excited. It's a great time to have spells and potions, um, and there's many different ways you can do this. So um, I actually have one where it's a pair work, and what they do is they're sort of like a consultant. So one of them gets to be a wizard or a witch or a sorcerer or anything, anyone that casts gals, you know. Um, you have that whole Harry Potter that they love, and so students really love this a lot. And when I was working in Germany um, and teaching kids there, they all wanted to be a hex, which is a witch in, in German. And so what they did, they work in pairs, and student A would say, hmm, we're going to make a potion. I'm going to make your potion. Um, and student B would pretend that they were coming in and they needed a special potion. And they could make it for anything. I want to be, um, I have a bully, so I want a potion that's going to really make me powerful so I can um, stand up to my bully. Or I like a girl and I want a love potion <laughs> or whatever potion. I want red hair. I want that potion or freckle juice. Sometimes you've heard of uh, maybe that, that uh, really famous story and they can do one to get rid of freckles. I mean, so there's a lot of things. So they work like that. And um, so they first have to say what is the problem that he or she wants a magic potion to fix. And then the other one, um, student A says, okay, well, let's go ahead and discuss the ingredients for the magic potion and what it does. So they have to write the steps. We're going to throw on three eyeballs or, I don't know, whatever they get creative. Um, they have to have two pug hairs. <laughs> two pug hairs that we throw in it and we stir it around um, and we have to say and they give instructions because with a spell you just don't do ingredients um, so you do learn counting and math you can have them do ounces and stuff but on the same point they actually have to do a verb so when you chant you have to and then they have a chant that they have to do so it's a really a lot of great English practice with this um, no they don't I, that's a good point. They would have to. Um, I, I think, yeah, maybe read the, the the worksheet and be able to do it. You don't have to do it with a worksheet. I just did it that way, just kind of, you know, as a guide for teachers. Boggles World has where you can actually make a spell book. And BogglesWorldESL.com is one of my favorite resources. They have so many great things. And you can see how this one is a little bit easier, you know. So for really young learners, it comes with flashcards, it comes with pictures. So with um, learners that, um, you know, you have that are maybe five or six or seven or eight, this, this might be better for them as language learners. You can do it. Okay, so if you have really, really young learners too, you can do a class spell. So after reading, for example, I read um, Julius um, Donaldson's, Julia Donaldson's Room on the Broom. My four-year-olds love that, four to six-year-olds. Afterwards, I'd bring a big fake pot, and then I would pretend we were all doing a spell, and each one had to add an ingredient. Now, I bought things to class, like, you know, um, gummy worms. You find a lot of candy that, that looks like things, like, you know, like lips and stuff like that, or spiders. You find candies or those fake ring things. And so what you do is that um, each one gets one of them. They draw out or they can choose. They pick it out and they have to say um, what it is. Pinch of a spider leg. And when we say it, then and then they have to write that down. We write that on the board and it becomes a class spell that we do together. And then we come up with a chant for it as well. You have things like raw spaghetti that acts like gut. I mean, it's up to you what you want to do and how much you want to do with it. But you can uh, really get your students. And then you, you give them a spell chant. Now, you can find a lot of different spell chants. I put that in the poll tree, too, where kids have come up with their own spell chant. You can use some of those. Um, but then they hear, see, here's an idea of one. Eye of a toad, ear of a bat, leg of a frog, tail of a cat. Drop them in, stir it up, pour it in a silver cup. 
And then you can have them say something like Shazam, Bazoo, and make them dance around and they will love it. So you have your class magic spell. Um, and then they can even pretend. You can say, okay, and it makes you a prince or a princess or whatever. <laughs> You can have, if they're a little bit older kids, you can also have them do trick-or-treat safety tip videos or posters. Um, you can make it very simple as well. Even your young learners, like six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, can do this. There's a lot of great tools that are easy to use with that. You have TAC.com. You don't even have to register. That's why I really love TAC. I love things where you can just go to the computer. Your students don't have to have an account. You don't have to have an account. And you can just make something. And TAC.com is like that. It works on any mobile device. If you have Chromebook, if you have um, anything like that, then they can make their poster like this. It's a multimedia poster. So it's sort of like if you were going to take the real poster, but instead you're doing this online. And then you save them paper. You save them from having to go buy a poster. And they can continue this at home if they want. S'more.com is a really good one, too. S'more.com is where you can have an online flyer. Now, as a teacher, you do have to register for this, but you can make really great flyers. One of my absolute favorites, and they know this because I always talk about them, is Bunty.com. You can add video. You can add audio. You can add YouTube. You can add a podcast. You can add stickers. Um, you, they also have a free app for iOS devices, and they're really nice. Animodo, you can make a quick uh, safety tip video with this. 30 seconds you get for free on any device, and it's also for the web. They have really good Halloween templates that you'll be able to find with pumpkins and things like that. So it's good to give safety tips um, for that. And you might have them research first safety tips for trick-or-treating. Um, or they might you might get them in a circle, and each one can break in pairs, and they can be responsible for one or two. Um, for example, one or two might be what? Um, check your candy, you know, you don't necessarily get uh, candy from strangers. Um, walk with a flashlight. Make sure that your clothes, you, if you're walking with dark clothes, make sure you have a white stripe or some kind of vest that's uh, bright so when you're walking around. Um, and these are different types of, you can have it for a class project too, like let's say you have a global collaboration project, you can have your students write this for maybe another class in like we have Serbia. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> I met you before. <laughs> um, and maybe she goes to Larissa in Italy, and they get together, and they write um, different safety tips for each other um, as well. Or they can do things about their different culture and stuff. Um, one of the things they can do for really young learners is you can take a character or maybe even their pet. We have a pet here. And they can design a costume for it, OK? So you can have them work in small groups or pairs. The great thing is that they learn math by doing this. They have to do measurements. And what you're doing is you're saying, um, or you can give them a character. Let's say that they read about, um, let's say they read about a teddy bear adventure, OK? And what you can do is this teddy bear, which is our mascot, it, or this pug, we'll say this pug for this one. This pug has to go to, Roscoe the pug has to go to a Halloween party, and he wants to have the coolest part, the coolest um, costume there. So you got to work in pairs, and you have to come up with the best costume for Roscoe. Now, you can give them real things. You can give them, like, Barbies or uh, teddy bears or things, and they have to measure it. And they not only design it together, but then they actually create the costume. And they can do anything. They can make them a robot. They can make them... Um, and then they have to come up with a fun background story. And then they can all showcase. But they learn math doing that. They learn how to measure. And they learn different types of English specific to that, like giving instructions, directions, reading instructions and directions. And if they don't do it, the great thing is when they do English like that, then they get to see the real product. Because if they didn't understand it right, then the measurement's going to be off. Um, it's also a good time to really learn about the different types of measurement systems that the different countries use. So you learn about the culture with that as well. And of course, there's lots of online Halloween games. And there's also games that you can play in the classroom. I play one that is called Monster. Um, and he says, um, the kids gather around and put the little monster puppet. And the kids go around. And they say, Monster, Mr. Monster, Mr. Monster, how are you? And the monster will talk and say, oh, I'm sad. 
Um, and then the little kids love that so much. But they know as soon as I say, oh, I'm hungry, then he's going to run around and he's going to chase one of them. And then they get to be the monster puppet. So that you can do in-class games or you can do online games. One of the best resources for that, um, and it is Elton winning one, is digitalplay.info.blog. They actually have a top 10 for Halloween. They give you free lesson plans on how to play that online game, where to find it. But not only that, um, you'll also find um, it gives you by age group. It gives you by language level. So it's really made for language learners um, as well. So you can do various different types of age groups with it. They give you pictures. They give you walkthroughs. They give you a whole lesson plan PDF that you can print. It's from Grant Stanley and Kyle Meyer, and they are absolutely wonderful. You can have a board game, a trick-or-treat uh, board game with flashcards, and that's uh, from teachchildrenesl.com. Once again, you can find all this, and you can find the slides when you get to, um, excuse me, when you get to um, the whole um, Pearl Trees uh, bookmarks right there. <laughs> So this is what Pearl Trees looks like. You have a whole section on games, free apps, free um, tree, um, a Halloween for teens, which is what we're going to present about next week. So that's the topic for next week. Zombies, recipes. I have Halloween cooking recipes, how to cook slime, and how to do glow-in-the-dark ink and things like that. You can find that there. You also find a webinar about it because I did one on it. Um, we also have one on... Um, spooky stories, uh, monsters, and then different more lesson plans and all the slides you can download as well. So um, go ahead and do, um, you, you can go ahead and see that. Me and Roscoe actually dress up every year. Uh, we were pirates before. We've been Amelie and he's been my little gnome. This year we might do Yoda and Leia. I'm not really sure. Um, if I can get the costume in time, we'll see. But thank you so much for coming. And I will see you next week when we talk about Halloween for teens. And if you have any ideas or